Tonight we're talking with the co-star of Judas and the Black Messiah, HBO's The Wire, and the just-released Silk Road. Actor Daryl Burt Gibson is here now. He made his acting debut in 2006 playing Darius O'Dog Hill, the streetwise lethal drug gang enforcer on HBO's acclaimed drama series, The Wire. Boys in the hood. Shit was tight, remember? But the rise didn't stop there. Soon Daryl Britt Gibson soared in other roles in films such as the Oscar-nominated Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and he's also in this year's streaming hit, Judas and the Black Messiah, playing civil rights activist and former Black Panther Party member, Barbie Rush. Show some discipline! Like Maybe he's right, Jim. Go overseas. Like you said, start a international proletarian revolution. Britt Gibson's latest film, which just dropped on Prime this week, is called Silk Road, the true life story of a dark web entrepreneur who slides into a criminal enterprise that ultimately destroys his life. How the fuck do you eat that shit, y'all? Fuck, you gotta get breakfast, man. Fucking disgusting. I don't even got a fucking half and half at this bullshit ass donut shop. The fuck is this? Call me out here to watch you eat a fucking bear claw? I want you to get that to Sandy. You can still get out for a minute or so, right? Right. <laughs> Tired, man. Tired. Don't give up, Rick. <laughs> you know, man, I was wrong about you. You are a friend. Tell me down. Daryl Brick Gibson joins us live from Los Angeles to talk about all things, the life and career and, and how we all got there. Daryl, how are you? I'm doing great, Elliot. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for making time to, to do this. Uh, I've been waiting to do this for a while. And, and let me, dude, you are about to blow up. Like, I don't know if anybody knows, oh, but man. You, really, <laughs> you are. You are. It's. Oh, it's it, it, and and exciting. it's so good. I'm 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 just excited, man. You should be. You absolutely should be. You're great talent, and uh, and I think you've got a lot to look forward in the future. But, you know, we wanted to do this interview, of course, because um, you know, how, when I found out that you had uh, you were born and raised in Silver Spring, Maryland, which is uh, uh, just outside of Washington D.C., not too far from where we are right now, where we're, we are recording this, we thought, gosh, you know, that's a long way from Hollywood. How does a guy like you get from Silver Spring out of Hollywood? Was this in the original plan or you had something else going on? Well, you know, um, I, I was actually born in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Uh, so then, and my, yeah, so then we bounced around and, and eventually ended up in uh, Silver Spring. Um, but how I ended up in Hollywood is, uh, you know, I, so how did I end up in Hollywood? I, I would say my start in um, Hollywood was not even in Hollywood. Because really? I, I got my first break on uh, The Wire. That's right. Shot in Baltimore, mm -hmm. Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, a dear friend of our family's who was like an uncle of mine um, who since passed away, he was a writer on the show. And, you know, I kind of was directionless, didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I can get you a, an audition. I can't get you a part. And I was like, that's fine with me. <laughs> uh, and a, a one day co-star turned into a, uh, you know, them making me a character. So, yeah, it was it was kind of a, a an around the way uh, journey to Los Angeles, but uh, but here now. Sure. We we and of course, I think many people remember that uh, that role you played for uh, more than a few seasons, uh, Old Dog Hill. Yeah. I believe it was. That's yeah. a t that's a Old tough Dog. role. That was a tough role. Um, yeah. uh, you you when you when you first got the role, did you think uh, this is a this is a good thing or some people are going to think less, <laughs> worse of me because of this role that I'm playing. I, I mean, it I really, really didn't. I really had no idea. I, I had had no um, acting experience. So I really didn't know what to expect from it in, in any capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I was just, you know, so excited to be given the opportunity. Um, and this, the role was slated to only be a one day role. 
Uh, and I got um, a call back from casting that they wanted me to read for two separate parts uh, after I had uh, completed my one uh, my one day co-star role. And I did that and I did something crazy in the audition that I was like, oh, I just ruined my career. That's it. There will be this is the beginning and the end of it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, the blessing was I got, I got a call back um, that they loved me so much that they wanted to make me a character. So I really had no idea. Um, the, the 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 magnitude of the show mm -hmm. to be honest um i was just so excited to be a part of something that that meant so much to so many people and but i had no idea that it was going uh that this character was going to turn into old dog because it yeah. was just a uh, drug mule uh when i when i when i went in for the initial audition sure sure and that was a tough role and you played it well um but yeah there there, there was some concern yeah particularly and we we would be remiss if we did not uh, remind you, the viewer, that um, uh, Daryl's mother is the uh, famed uh, journalist and former columnist for USA Today, uh, Donna Britt, who wrote in The Root, quote, My middle son is a cold-hearted drug enforcer who brutally murdered a young man poised to leave a life of crime. His father and I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, my mom is, she is incredible. She's yeah. the absolute best, the absolute best. Yeah. But again, she's, she's written very, <laughs> she has written very extensively about the role you played and how she, she loved what you brought to it, but at times mm. worried about the, the negative stereotypes that it, that it, um, conveys in a, in a particular role. And while you haven't continued to play those roles, is there some concern on your part in these early stages with rising about uh, what roles you play and what roles you, you won't take? Uh, I, I do say no a lot more often than I say yes. Um, and I, which is a, which is an ab absolute blessing to even be in the position to say no to something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am very, very particular about the, the roles and projects that um, I give myself to because I, I love this uh, so much and I wanna be able to tell stories that, that mean something. Um, and so I am very, very particular about the type of stuff that I get involved in because, you know, you understand that you, these, you know, they film and television, it's gonna last a lot longer than we are. Oh, you know? yeah. And so you wanna, you wanna make sure you're, you're giving yourself to something um, that you feel, you know, confident in and that you have love for, um, because it is time and, and time is the most valuable commodity that we have. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. See all this gray here? You really, <laughs> you start to really think about your time and how worth, how, how much your time is worth <laughs> as time goes along. So believe me, I know what you're talking about. So that said, um, you, you took this role in, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah and, um, uh, all, Thank you. Yeah, all props, man. Because And he, it, here's my journey to this film. My son, who I had mentioned to you, said, Dad, you got to see this. got to see this. Gotta, gotta, gotta. And so I oh, okay. Yeah, I, I saw the trailer. Man, you know, what's on? Uh, Judas and the Black. Uh, and he came, comes back to me about a week or so later, and he said, did you see the film? I said, no. See the film. Put down the phone now. See the film. Which I did. And I, was like, I came back on the phone. I told him, why didn't you tell me this was the story of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark and Bobby Rush and, and the Pat? Yeah. Dad, you should have done this. Okay, whatever. But it's it's such, um, I've seen the other films, and I don't know if you have, some of the other films that were done uh, about the Black Panthers, and I, I really did not care for them. And that comes from someone who's old enough to have run with some of the some of the, the members of the Panthers, the Panther Party in Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I'm from, mm. and New Bedford, Massachusetts, even sold Panther Papers for a second. Mm. And I was, I was a radical. I was right up in there. And I thought, you know, they're never telling the story, the true story about what the Panthers were all about, what they tried to accomplish, and, and what they were fighting against in terms of some of the uh, the law enforcement on a federal level. And when I saw this film, I was like, yeah, they got it. They got it. Mm -hmm. How much did you know going into this? Um, you know, I, I'm speaking of my mother. Uh, I'm, you know, so thankful to my beautiful parents for my education of the Black Panthers growing up, because if it wasn't for my parents, I would know nothing about them because they have been stripped from, you know, our text, our history books that they, you know, that they, uh, that we're forced to read in mm -hmm. schools 
Um, so thank you know, thanks to my parents. I know what I do know about the Black Panthers, but getting into the film, uh, it was like relearning everything because they had accomplished so much, you know, and you can, I, you know, from sun up to sundown, reading about the Panthers and what they had accomplished and what they were fighting for. You just, it's, um, it makes you just wonder, you know, what are, what are you doing? You know, how, 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 you know, because they, they ultimately gave the ultimate sacrifice mm-hmm. you know, yep. and, uh, and were willing to give that sacrifice because community uh, meant everything. Mm-hmm. And, and, and equality and justice are a fight worth giving your life for. Mm-hmm. Well put, well put. Have you had a chance? The gentleman that you play, most people are not familiar with, mm-hmm. but, but but then when we put two and two together and they understand he is now the present congressman out of out of uh, uh, Chicago and has been f- for some time, uh, the Honorable Bobby Rush, um, most people don't know his history. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you had a chance to meet Congressman yeah. Rush? I had the... Uh, extreme pleasure and honor of speaking to uh, Mr. Rush last week. Uh, and it was, it was so, uh, so enriching. Uh, it was, um, I'm, I'm still sort of like on a high from it and him and just, you know, sitting down and listening, listening to his stories. Um, cause he has so many of them. Um, just listening to, I mean, it's, whew, I, I right. get chills even thinking about the conversation just because you're, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it, it meant so much, you know, to, to see this man that I had the honor of um, being given the opportunity to portray in a film. What, what um, did he tell you? What in front of him? Speak. May I ask what, what, what did, what did you guys talk about? You know, without, you know, letting us in on, on, on talked, the private stuff. You know, yeah, I mean, we talked about everything, you know, we talked about um, the first time that he met chairman, uh, Fred Hampton, we talked about, um, cause Bobby, you know, Bobby Rush was a co-founder of the Illinois chapter mm-hmm. of the Black Panther party. Right. Um, the one which you see in Judas and the Black Messiah. Um, so we sp- spoke a little bit about, you know, the formation of the Illinois chapter. We spoke about, um, you know, he and, he and Fred's, um, relationship. Um, he did, I mean, just, it was just, it was just gym after gym after gym that he was, you know, dropping. And I was just trying to pick them all up as he was speaking because it was just so much that, um, and, and still so much that I want to ask him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I just wanted, to, I wanted to just listen. He's like, <laughs> "Do you have any questions?" I said, "I'm just here to listen." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you! And you know, we're, we just showed you that picture. Let me put that picture back up. I just thought the minute I saw this, I said, "Okay, this was a slam dunk on casting because there's a there's a mm. similar resemblance." But for you, was mm-hmm. it was it more the resemblance with uh, with physical features or something else you brought to the role that 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 brought this alive for you and everybody else? I, I think the entire cast is a slam dunk. When yeah, it comes to casting. You know, you you close your eyes and you listen to to Daniel give those speeches, and 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 you are you know I I've had um, people that I've spoken to who are part of the Panthers who said they were transported. Oh, without a doubt, his voice. You know, um, you know, Lake- for Lakeith, um, Dominique Fishback, mm-hmm. who's playing Mama Kua, Deborah Johnson. Um, I mean, it just it it's the, the entire cast is a slam dunk with, as far as casting. I think for me personally, what I what there is the resemblance for sure, um, but also just um, really really leaning into the research of it. You know, so listening to. Uh, his him speak as much as I could. I would I would um, chop up audio that I had of him from YouTube and then turn it into MP3s. And I would uh, run to it. I would work out to it. I would listen to it in the car, um, and just trying to catch as much of the essence of him that I could without be, having been able to speak to him prior to filming. Um, so really, it was um, an extreme labor of love, um, but one that I would do. You know that I I, I gladly you know, would do a hundred times over because, mm-hmm. um, it's, you know, it's an honor to be able to, to, um, to be chosen to step into those, to those shoes, you know, mm-hmm. because of, you know, just the extraordinary, um, you know, just how extraordinary the Black Panther Party was and, yeah. and their legacy still is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you did it well as, 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 as well. Now you step Thank from, you, you step, you're welcome. Perfectly welcome. You step from that role into a role, uh, uh, for a film that was uh, just released just last week as we, as we record this Silk Road, which as a, as a reporter, 
and anchor i remember very clearly um yeah. ross Helbrick um and his uh his antics and uh, and the result of it a lot of people may not know what went on uh tell me a little bit about the film and what you play so Silk Road is the story of Ross Ulbricht, who was uh, this kid in, in, in Austin who started uh, the, the website Silk Road, which is essentially like the black market um, of the internet. Um, um, and in the film, I play someone who worked, Jason Clark plays um, a an officer who is tr tasked with trying to bring down Ross Ulbricht, and I play someone that Jason Clark had a history with who can actually help him understand the internet and how the internet works because his character has no idea um, how to navigate that water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to to yeah. say the yeah. least, he's, he's yeah. pretty, yeah. yeah, he's pretty clueless. Uh, some people that are recognized. Jurassic narc. As yeah. they call him. Yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was the term I was just trying to remember. You heard me. <laughs> Heard my head yeah, clicking there. Yeah. Hey, let's take a second to take yeah. a look at this. Here's a clip from uh, from yeah. Silk Road, uh, uh, just out in theaters just this last week, uh, co-starring uh, Daryl Britt Gibson. Take a look at this. Oh. You know, you are a walking cliche about it. White man buying dope from a nigga in the hood. Yeah, but that's Bowden, motherfucker. Bowden, Bowden, same shit, man. Bowden. All right. Now, let me ask you a question. Shoot. Who out there is slanging right now? Jumpy ass rabbit motherfucker with the cornrows and the buck teeth there. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you racist as shit. Yeah, but am I fucking wrong? Nah, nah, today you right as rain. But but tomorrow? Look over there. See that? It's that nigga right there. Mm. Game is changing, feel me? You got my shit? Yeah. Man. No shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the future, baby. Let me see your phone. Your phone. Fuck you want with my Let phone. me see your phone. <laughs> there, look at it. Alright. Let me see your ID. One. Let me see your ID. Shit. Old ass father. What are you doing? Can you just relax for a second? All right. Congratulations, you now own a Bitcoin wallet. Next time you want some dope, how about the Sam send it, all right? That's your salary. Or call me a fucking more. <laughs> Silk Road now out in theaters and streaming on your local TV. In fact, all your TVs and all your devices. Um, it, what was the biggest hurdle for you in, in, in taking this role? Um, again, this is, you know, stuff... You're getting to be a master at this. This is uh, 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 mm. fiction based on fact, and we're taking things that were ripped from the headlines. So there's a lot of us who know this story backwards and forwards. A lot of people don't. But what was your biggest hurdle taking uh, taking on this role uh, that was part of a um, uh, a larger true to life story? Yeah, uh, the, the for me the biggest hurdle was he the character Rayford is. So he does something that and, and is a part of something that I would never, ever, ever, ever be a part of, you know? Mm -hmm. So he is this informant, he's working with these people. So he's so against who I am and what I believe in um, as a human being, which is what, what drew me to it because it's interesting to be able to try to peel back the layers of somebody that you are, you know, so different than um, in your beliefs um and, and and what you um are trying to accomplish in this world and in this life so i think it was that was the, uh, the biggest hurdle but not necessarily so much a hurdle once you start to dive into just trying to understand what makes this person who they are um it becomes more interesting and, and a little bit of a character study just like what would what, what make this person want to become what they've become mm -hmm. so it, yeah it's exciting to be able to explore those um those you know the complexity of, of the human condition for certain you know for different individuals mm -hmm. absolutely you my friend are not just an actor you're also a musician mm. are you not yes sir tell me yes, about sir, that uh, it, she taught love is the name of the group tell yes. me about it yes you know i was uh I, i've always music has always been what i am truly 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 in love with um it's the it's the 
freest, purest for, uh, form of expression for me um, as an artist. Um, and so I had always been kicking around the idea of doing music. I did music a little bit, um, but I got linked up with a buddy of mine who's now my bandmate, Adam, because a, a, a mutual friend of ours said, hey, y'all both make music. I think y'all should connect. Uh, we did. We sat down. We vibed over some music. And it's kind of weird because music is such a personal thing. So you never know like who your musical person is going to be. But he put on an Amy Winehouse record. And I told him, I said, my favorite song ever from Amy Winehouse is. And as soon as I said, love is a losing game, he started <laughs> to play it. And I said, okay, there it is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's exciting. We're, 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 we're getting ready to put out an EP. So we're working on that, finishing that up now. So uh, I'm excited to get that to the world. Right. Where can pe pe people can find it online, some of the uh, things that you've released uh, yeah. already? Where can they find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, two, two of our, both of our uh, our singles are out right now on Spotify, Apple Music, um, iTunes, anywhere you get music. Uh, she Taught Love, we are there for your listening pleasure <laughs> and enjoyment, hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely. Go looking for it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Hey, what you do, what, what, what you've been doing during the quarantine? I've been asking this uh, for, for everybody lately because we've all had different roads that we've had to take. Yeah. You know, Elliot, I've been um, doing a lot of writing and, and, and I've been doing a lot of uh, trying to stay connected to people um, as much as I possibly can, uh, because it is a time in which um, we're, we are so isolated um, and, and this type of isolation can really be taxing um, on the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to just stay as connected as I can to loved ones. I've, I've reached out to people that I haven't reached out to in forever, you know, because I just, you just, you know, it just checking in on people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and just, just a lot of writing. I wrote two feature films in 70 days. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been trying to stay as active as I can. Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of meditation, um, you know, a lot of checking in with myself and, uh, you know, telling my, you know, a lot of, you know, self-love is, is so important. It's Absolutely. Like, it's important, you know, every day uh, and every year but right now uh it's it's paramount um so you know just you know doing a lot doing a lot of that you know checking in with myself and, and making sure i'm checking in on people i love mm -hmm. absolutely uh, self-love <clears throat> one of the most important components of, of all our lives um speaking of oh, that absolutely. speaking of that one thing i wanted to ask because i i think this is something that people don't realize you have a connection i think at least an emotional if not intellectual connection to many of the turmoils or many of the things that are we see going on in the streets right now much of which is is part unfortunately part of the fabric of not only our life but in particular your peer group and your generation i think suffer with this more and we find uh many of the deaths being caused uh unnecessarily by um uh, police officers in the street you have a familial connection with that, do you not? Because from, from what I understand, you are uh, named uh, named for an uncle who uh, died an unfortunate death some years ago. Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm um, named after my uncle Daryl, um, who was shot and killed by the police um, mm. before I was I was uh, even uh, you know before I was even a thing. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm honored and blessed to be carrying that name and also understanding that the legacy that is attached to uh, his name and everything that he should be here on this earth to accomplish and to, and to give back, um, he's not. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I wake up every day and go to sleep every night hoping that I'm, I'm doing him justice and, and, and bringing honor to his name because, you know, my mother chose me to have the name and it's, you know, it means everything that I was chosen for that. I understand the responsibility that comes with that. So, you know, I, I you know, you're black men in America. We've all, we, we all are experiencing <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the trauma that, you know, that we've had to endure, um, for forever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm in, I'm active in, in, in trying to, to right the ship in any way that I can, because, you know, black is beautiful and, uh, you know, black is black is special, it's spiritual, it's black is love, um, black is royalty. Uh, and I, you know, I, I you know, it's, it's high time for the world to to respect us as such. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for your work in trying to push that needle forward, because um, I, I think um, you, you certainly have a, a clear understanding of what's needed and uh, a pretty good idea. I think not all of us, not any of us really have an understanding of which which path forward, but some of us have a clearer understanding of which one of those paths may work. And I, I think you're one of those people. So uh, thank you very much. Daryl Britt Gibson, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today no. on Now. Continued. Thank you, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for making the time. Continued success in life and career. And please, please don't be a stranger. Come back soon. Uh, I'm, I'm coming back, Elliot. You said it. I'm coming back. <laughs> okay. Daryl Britt Gibson, thank you, sir. Thank you, Elliot. All right. Thank you. And thank you for your company. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and be sure and come back next week, next Thursday, right here for more of now. Till then, take care. Peace.